it's mail day, everybody. Let's see what we've got in the old box today. <gasps> Ooh, it's a new Juki DX3000 QVP. <gasps> oh, oh, I can't wait to get inside. Oh, that's right. Let's welcome that new Juki and get it out of the box. Whoa. Oh, it's in another box. It's like Christmas. It's going to be one of those really small sewing machines when I'm done. I'm sure of that. Boom. And there is the next box that was in the last box. And I am super excited to see what's inside of this box. That's right. This is going to be an unboxing video for the Juki DX 3000 QVP. QVP means you get it in your local sewing machine dealership. This is a machine that is supported by the local uh, sewing community around you. So that's one of the things that's really important to me here at Making It Fun. If you're new to Making It Fun, welcome. My name is Rob Appel. I work for Michael Miller Fabrics and I've got this wonderful little show on YouTube and we have all kinds of fun visiting local quilt shops as well as teaching quilting and sewing here in my home studio. Just love doing it. Now, in those unboxing videos, they always start out with a person at the beginning of the video saying, hey, I just was sent this product and I want to let you know this is not a sponsored video. Well, that can't be said here because I hopefully you all know that I have partnered a couple years ago with Juki brand sewing machines and I absolutely love them. But the machines I started with are their industrial machines and their long arm machines, which are actually on that side of the room over there. And so you see them in some of my other sewing videos or when we're doing the long arm stuff. Stuff, but we need a sewing machine from Juki that sits right here in the video and it is out of the box. So I'm going to take this out of the box, but this sewing machine was sent to me because it is kind of the industrial and the home sewing machine meets itself or meets, meets up together. I don't even know what to say about it. And, and that's really what I'm trying to say here is I do not know the machine. I know a lot about sewing machines. And so we're going to open it up. We're going to look at the accessories it came with straight out of the box. But then over the next gosh, probably a couple years, we're just going to get to know this machine much, much better as it sits here on the table with us while we do all of our sewing projects. So I'm super excited. I know it's 12 inches of workspace. I know it's got a ton of extra lighting in it. I know that it's pretty dang heavy, which for me, I love because I want something solid when I'm doing my free motion machine quilt. Why are we still talking about it within the box? I will be right back. That'll be much easier to talk about this way, don't you think? Okay, so what was in the box? Well, good thing to find out there was a sewing machine in the box. And it doesn't actually look like the machine comes with a free arm because it came with this wonderful table. And these wonderful tables, if you've never seen one of these before, they're designed to fit around the exterior of the machine like this to extend out your workspace. And the feet on them are going to just pop up and lock into place. So this is pretty cool. And if I know my machines, yes I do, these feet can be twisted to adjust in case your table surface isn't perfectly level. Um, and a lot of them aren't, you'd be like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, it actually does, because a lot of times you'll have your cutting mat over half of your machine, something like that. So therefore, these feet back here can be shorter than these ones up here because you want it nice and flat. And what you really want is you want it nice and flush with the uh, bed of your machine this way so that that keeps everything running through nice and nice and smooth that way. Uh, it came with a knee lift. The knee lift, as you can see, is gonna go into that hole right there and will hang below the table. That will lift um, the presser foot, lower the presser foot. And I was reading, and remember, I, again, I haven't handled the machine. I've only read about the machine. So this has got presser foot pressure sensitivity. And a lot of that is also gonna be programmable. So we can set our pivot height for certain stitches and pivot height is what controls the amount of pressure downward. And we also can control the style of feed on the machine and it even has a top feed system like I grew up on, on the FOF machines that I just love. So it's got that four wheel drive, that dual feed from the top, extra feed dogs. So really this has got a ton of different ways that you can adjust the capabilities of the machine so that you can do heavy fabrics, fine fabrics, heavy and fine fabrics together, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. 
power cord. That will also come in handy. Uh, the foot control here, uh, different than the one I have on my other machine, so I've got to figure it out. But I did read that it's going to do scissor cut, I believe, and knee lift here, and obviously gas control here. So maybe this is a clutch. I don't know. Do we even have stick shifts out there anymore? Uh, ginormous box of accessories. Oh my goodness. And the machine has different feed dogs and stitch plate to drop into a single stitch mode. And uh, those of you tech fans out there, machines are built different when they're built to be single stitch only machines, more that industrial concept. And so Juki being an industrial manufacturer of sewing machines, they are set up here for us. When we go into our straight stitch mode, we're moving out of that home sewing and back into the industrial. So I'm gonna learn about that. It's gonna be really cool to share with all of you. We've got a million and 10 different uh, accessory feet in here. I'm sure I'll tip it just right and spill it all over the table here in a second. Uh, I was also reading about the button holder unit and I can see it's got a really fancy button hole attachment that's going to plug in to the brains of the sewing machine. And the button holder attachment is going to make a beautiful satin stitch on both legs of the button hole, a really even, nicely balanced, dense button hole. So that's gonna be really exciting as well. So what I need to do now is really take a minute and find a good place to plug it in right and uh, get it set up, turn it all around. Hey, let's just do the first thing we should do with every sewing machine today and then we'll end the video. Let's learn how to thread it. Let's learn how to wind a bobbin uh, and let's just make a straight stitch before we call it a day. Um, so I'm gonna get all set up for that and I'll be right back one more time. Okay, now I know this is just sloppy camera work to have the camera in the shot, but the Juki's nickname is Sayaka. I, Mr. Nishimura, I apologize. I probably said that wrong, but it means bright in Japanese. And this is the first thing I noticed when setting this up. So I brought the cameras over to show you. This is hilarious. I use an iPhone, like a size five. It's small, it works around. This is what we use for the needle camera. And in my other videos, you've watched them, you always know that I'm challenged with that shot. It's often dark, it's out of focus, and all kinds of things happen here. So when I turn on the machine, look, if you can see on the screen over here, there's like, there's like strobe lines going through and I panicked. I went, oh no, what am I gonna do? So then I went over to the screen here and I've got these dials and I actually started to turn up the lights on the machine and look at that. Not only is it incredibly bright, but now the camera that I'm gonna use for those up close needle shots is dialed in as well. So this little, well, this big boy just earned its name Sayaka. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Nishimura, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you very much. Okay, now I'm gonna move the cameras out of the way so we can start talking about, I know we're gonna do needles and bobbins and threads and stuff, but man, I'm excited about this stitch plate system. And as I started really unpacking the way this is gonna work, we're gonna, we're gonna do the feed dogs too. So I'll be right back with this junk out of the way now. And this is a really, really cool feature. The machine comes with two stitch plates and two sets of feed dogs to make your straight stitching, like your patchwork style sewing, all the more awesome. So if you look real close here, this is the single hole, just a small little hole there. That's the single hole needle plate. And so we're gonna swap it out. The machine came with this really cool kind of T style, T looking screwdriver. It's got all these different size tips. And the first thing we need to do is stick one of those right down in here in front of this old stitch plate. We're gonna pop it up. The machine over here on the screen is telling me that the plate needs to be reseated so it has a sensor it already knows. I probably should have powered the machine down for this, uh, but I want the light actually, so you can all see what I'm doing. Press your foot's in the up position, that is important, sorry about that. So if you're ever taking something apart for the first time, I learned this years ago the hard way, take note of how it comes apart so you can put it back together. So as I come out of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this kind of the way it was in the machine in case I get confused later on. And then I'm also gonna take this screwdriver here and it goes in behind the feed dogs and then once it's behind the feed dogs, I'm gonna just go ahead and put a little pressure up and it's gonna pop those feed dogs right out. Okay, now that is super cool, I think. So the wide extra feed dogs, the one that have like five tracks in them or five rows of teeth, that's gonna be your zigzag feed dogs. The ones with three rows of teeth are gonna be for your straight stitch only. And it's gonna go out basically the opposite way uh, excuse me, it's gonna go in the opposite way it came out. So I'm gonna look to line up these little pins right here, and I'm gonna lock that down from the back of the foot, locking it in at the back of the foot, and then snapping it in with my thumb, super easy. 
And then when it comes to sliding in the stitch plate, I'm going to go ahead and look for these little tabs here. Those tabs are going to slide right underneath the housing. And then I'm going to, and I've always liked to do this, I like to keep a little pressure on my left hand side as I snap down the right hand side. I want to make sure everything locks down and I look like I've got a little bit of a gap here. So I'm just going to reseat this second time. Oh, I could feel that that wasn't very uh, successful at all. And the way I, I had done that, Okay, there we go. Okay, locked in beautiful. That's perfect that way. Um, to, and, oh, okay, cool. There's information over here on the screen. Uh, detected straight throat plate and feed dogs. Um, delete selected patterns from before, maintain the pattern. Okay, so it's just giving me information, uh, letting me know uh, that the straight stitch uh, plate is in and um, it's selected for that. I'm hoping it has some sort of sensor in the machine that will now lock it out so I cannot go into a zigzag. Um, I wonder if that's possible, let's see. Okay, my screen, awesome, Juki, you're so intuitive, I love it. The, the screen no longer will let me get into any zigzag stitches. Why is that important? Okay, well I just took off this plate, right? This is the zigzag plate and the needle travels from side to side through that little oval right there. And now I've got one with just a single hole. So I have to make sure that the needle lines up. And this is one of the things that I like to do. Now we often talk about not handling over the hand wheel, especially on these super electronified machines. I think that's a word, look it up, electronified. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna slowly rotate what I'm watching for right now is I'm just going to make sure that my needle is lined up and everything before I were hit the gas because I don't want to just apply force and possibly break the needle or damage my brand new stitch plate, something like that. I had snapped the foot off. Uh, most of these feet are going to go on and off just the same uh, as every sewing machine out there, which I love. It makes life easy. Um, I want to play with a couple things at once. So I've got a quarter inch foot with an edge guide. And I really like edge guide feet or um, sewing guides on my beds and my machine. So we're gonna lock this in, line in some stuff up. I'm gonna pull this little lever right here. We're gonna get inside the bobbin door. We're going to go ahead and prepare to load up our bobbin. Each stitch plate has its own bobbin door. So please make sure you don't lose the bobbin doors. Hang on to those there. Let's get this machine threaded up. Okay, so I've got a spool of my favorite Aurifil cotton thread, and I'm gonna go ahead and load this into the machine. And then one of the things we like to do is use a thread retention guide or a spool cap that is larger than the plastic, but because the way the Aurifil works, it's usually just the thread. So I'm actually gonna use this small one with the clamps to hold it inside nice and secure. That should work beautifully there. And now what I want to do is, I, it, this is a beautiful machine. It's got all the information right here on top of it. So the dashed lines versus the straight lines. The dashed lines are for winding the bobbin. And I know that because there's dashed lines around the bobbin when I get to the end. So one comes underneath here, comes over this way. Two is going to come on the top edge and then around this little thing that looks like it's a screw, but it's really a thread tensioner for your bobbin. Okay, it's going to avoid this second piece here. So it's just gonna come straight off of here over to the bobbin. You're gonna drop your bobbin straight down. These are class 15 bobbins. These are very, very common bobbins, very easy to find. And I'm just now wrapping the thread maybe 10 or 15 times clockwise sewing direction, right? And then I like to cut the, spool, uh, the thread tail pretty tight, kick over the bobbin winder, and it's just gonna go, look mom, no hands. No feet, right? Like, so it's sewing on its own. I can walk away from the machine and it's just gonna go ahead and wind up that bobbin while it is sewing. Now, I know a lot of machines will offer the feature where you can wind a bobbin and sew at the same time, which means you have two spools of thread on the machine. I actually don't recommend that because I have made some serious rat's nests before where one thread overlaps the other and pulls them back to the bobbins or whatnot. So I'm a one thread at a time kind of guy. I'm just saying it here on camera. Okay, that finished up. This is really cool. There are little thread cutters inside the little bobbin uh, holder. You can kind of run it across your fingers like that. That works really cool. Now, as we go ahead to bring our bobbin into the machine, if you don't know, um, this little bobbin door, when it's positioned just as it's come out of the machine like this, it actually has a wonderful diagram right there on it. So we're just gonna follow that diagram, dropping the bobbin into the drop-in bobbin case, put my finger on top so I can actually secure the thread tension. 
as I pull it from the right to the left. And also there's a one, a two up here, because I'm gonna bring this around this corner, which provides a thread tail. Three down into that area, which is super cool. That's a holding device. And then as I put this um, bobbin door back on, I can now cut the thread. There's a thread tail, but it's not trapped in the bobbin door. So as I get ready to do the rest of the machine, when I take that first stitch, technically I can just rock and roll. I like to try to pull the threads up. I'm a little old fashioned as well. Like I said, I'm a one thread kind of guy. So <laughs> here we go. Let's follow the thread diagram all over again, starting with the straight lines and, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go underneath this guide, this time around the, the back end of the machine. Now here's a good lesson. We should always make sure our presser foot is in the up position. The presser foot on most sewing machines, even these new ones, will, will open your tension disc. So it makes the machine so much easier to thread. So as I come around one, here's two, coming back around three was right here, back up. And as I come around here, the needle should have been waiting for me, but I was playing with it. So now I've caught my take up lever. It comes down and it's a really, really good idea at this point now to drop that presser foot so that I have nice tension on my thread, right? And this machine has a built-in needle threader, but because the machine cycles itself electronically, what I wanna do is I wanna drop the needle in the down position and the up position once electronically without touching the machine so that now as I come over here, there's five, here's six on the thread guide here. Now I can pull this up, it looks like here is seven and I push the magic button and voila, there's a little loop of thread hanging out the back of my needle. I'm gonna grab it gently and pull it. And I have a fantastic um, needle threaded, super easy. And like I said, I wanna bring that thread to the up position, so I'm just gonna drop down, drop right back up, and now I can see the thread tail. I think you can too, that's pretty awesome. And I'm gonna put the presser foot into the up position so I can do on this machine it by touching a button, which is really cool because either way, if I touch the button or I use the lever, when I hit the gas, I think the foot's gonna come down for me. I got a piece of fabric stashed around here somewhere. I just want to run a stitch real quick. First time this machine's ever been operated by me, so I just wanna see and hear and all of that what it's gonna do. I'm just gonna pull my thread below. I'm going to see if when I press the gas, nope, it's telling me to lower the presser foot. I have some programming to do. I was reading, I can program that into the second part of the foot control, and so I'm gonna press that button down now. Take a couple stitches. I can barely hear it sewing. That's always a great sign. I'm gonna back up, because that's what I'd normally do. Ah, oh, beautiful. Okay, now I have my foot as hard on the gas as I possibly can. So there's another pretty cool feature on the machine, which is a speed controller, which allows me to adjust the speed. This is a great feature for our free motion quilters. Oh, wow, I can tell this machine is solid. Oh, I'm gonna love having this on the set. It's so quiet, feels super accurate. Okay, well, as I promised, <laughs> I don't know much about the machine, but I'm super, super excited to have the DX3000 QVP here with me because for the longest time, we've needed the right Juki right here, and it has finally happened. So Juki, thank you very, very much for sending me an incredible sewing machine. I cannot wait to learn how to use this better with all of my um, friends out there that are following along right here at Making It Fun. Friends out there that are following right uh, at Making It Fun. I do get a lot of emails. Those of you who already have Jukies that are asking me questions, Send them in, rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com. Send me those emails. I won't have all of the answers, but I can try to help you all get those answers, and then I'll learn too. And that's what we do right here at Making It Fun. Hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe, spread the word, and get out there and enjoy being in a local quilt shop or a local sewing machine dealership in your community. Thanks again. I really wish I would have known there was a beautiful box inside of this cardboard box because I have been wrestling this around to try to make the cinematography awesome for all of you. Wow, this is a heavy machine. I could have done all those special effects with just this part of the box. Pretty cool. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.